When the kiwifruit disease PSA was confirmed in New Zealand in November 2010, the industry mobilised its available resources to limit its impact. Now, the focus has moved to longer term activities that will keep the New Zealand kiwifruit industry sustainable into the future, as PSA response manager Stuart Kay explains. So PSA has obviously been a huge um, impact for the industry and plant and food is a, is a, a key player within the industry. Uh, we've got three kiwifruit orchards ourselves, so as a result of that we've, we've responded um, and I think in quite a significant way to, to PSA. So Zespri and KVH have invested um, you know, sort of in the order of five, five plus million dollars plant and food through use of the CRIP, which is the kiwifruit royalty money that we earn from the sale of Port 16A, and through redirection of our um, government investment through MSI, um, is currently investing around six to six and a half million dollars specifically on understanding and, and learning about and helping to control PSA um, into the future. That covers uh, a whole range of different research areas. Um, we've probably got somewhere in the order of 20 to 30 scientists working pretty much full time on PSA, but the total team working on PSA would, would probably be in the order of 100 plus scientists and, and other people within and plant and food. We've got a number of key focuses on, on PSA research here at Plant and Food. Um, longer term, the, the key one is on breeding, uh, breeding a resistant cultivar to PSA. Um, and the idea is that that will provide the long-term solution. Managing PSA at the moment is costing growers in the industry a lot of money. Um, they're having to pay for um, a lot more monitoring, a lot more crop protection um, materials and sprays. Um, there's a lot more um, orchard management required with PSA on the orchard. And basically it's driving the costs of growing kiwi fruit up considerably. Um, so. The ideal solution would be to have something which is resistant to PSA um, and doesn't require all of those management, additional management options as well. Realistically, I think what we're going to see is, is a cultivar which is likely to be resistant but will re still require some of those management practices in, into the future. But as we get smarter and better and um, learn more, hopefully we'll be able to diminish the amount of those management practices as we go forward and re the answer reduce all the costs to the industry. Breeding a new cultivar with resistance to PSA is a key step for New Zealand's kiwifruit industry and the breeders at Plant and Food Research have responded to the challenge. What you see behind me is a, a sample of seedlings from a large number of crosses, probably the largest number of crosses that the kiwifruit breeding team has done so far and uh, it incorporates a large number of different mothers and different fathers. The, the main focus of the kiwifruit program at the moment is uh, PSA resistance or tolerance that has added up one more trait to the total list of traits that we've been looking for on the last few years. The, the number of uh, traits um, that they are the usual traits for evaluation of the new cultivars. They include dry matter, bricks, fruit size, storage. Um, they can include the time for harvest, the color, um, and other number of traits. Each one of them have different weights, but PSA tolerance has become the most important of them. What we have observed is a number of vines that appear to be resistant and the number of vines that appear to be susceptible as well as tolerant. Um, tolerant and susceptible is very difficult at this stage to separate because the symptoms for PSA they could appear a bit later on some vines than in others as well as the symptomatology is different on each individual seedling, some of them showing only spots on the leaves to branch deed or complete death of the plant. Being able to measure a plant for its level of resistance to PSA has become vital in breeding a new kiwifruit cultivar. The plant pathology team have developed a number of new methods for testing plants that are now being used to support the breeding team. The, the main focus of the work in this lab now is to look at 
small seedlings and their susceptibility to PSA. Uh, the basis of that work really is to assist the breeding team who are coming up with different crosses, um, new families of kiwi fruit, and we have the capacity to inoculate those seedlings and measure symptom expression and we're always comparing those symptoms back to how 16A performs. So we're looking to see if we can get some that are more resistant. Um, and that's also getting <coughs> mapped out to expressions in the field with some of the, the different crosses that they have in the field at Tupuki. Well, we get, we get different tissue types. Sometimes we get material from the field. Leaf material we've found very difficult to test. It's a very, very variable assay. Uh, what we've been working on more recently are small seedlings and they're proving to be far more consistent in terms of symptom expression, both Hayward seedlings and 16A seedlings. We can inoculate them by spray inoculations, a foliar spray, or we can inoculate them using a stab inoculation method and that's proving to be very good. We can see with the stab inoculation we see anything from just a very small lesion at the wound site which uh, can actually heal over or it can actually progress systemically through the plant, giving us uh, petiole infections, leaf infections, straight through to complete mortality of the plant. So that the hope is that we can find some lines, some crosses that are more resistant to 16A. Uh, that material has already been sampled by uh, Sue Gardner and her team. The plants have been tagged. So we can supply them with the information on how any individual plant has performed in our seedling bioassay. They can then use that information uh, because they have a, a sort of genetic blueprint of that plant and see if they can map any particular uh, increase in resistance to different genes in the plant. So we are trying to build up a picture based on seedling bioassays, based on woody stem bioassays, based on observations in the field which collectively give you a better picture of how any particular kiwi fruit genotype is performing in its resistance to PSA. Because no one bioassay on its own is good enough to tell you that information. It's, it's very dangerous to extrapolate from a, a small seedling, these rock wool seedlings, straight through to how a particular genotype will perform in the field. So we need to get a collective data set and see if if they match up well and then we're getting a, a better correlation of symptom expression and that gives us greater confidence that yes we do have something here within the genetics of this particular plant that give us reason to believe it will be more resistant to PSA. Breeding a new cultivar with resistance to PSA is a long-term strategy for the kiwi fruit industry, ultimately reducing the intense management practices that are currently required to manage the disease. The breeding program at Plant and Food Research is using a matrix of information about potential parents to develop a new PSA-resistant variety with the right mix of grower and consumer characteristics.